Good morning, everybody. Today's story is The Secret World. And it's all about, you guessed it, fairies. These particular fairies are called flower fairies. The book is written by Cicely Mary Barker. Do you believe in fairies? This book is all about the secret world of the flower fairies. It is rare to see a flower fairy. Like most fairies, they are extremely shy of big people and you will only see them if you believe in them. Where are the fairies? Where are the fairies? Where do they come from? We've seen fairy rings. They leave behind them. It is a secret. No one is telling. Why, in your garden, surely they're dwelling. No need for journeying, seeking afar. Where there are flowers, there fairies are. You can look for them in your own yard. Whenever a seed sprouts, a flower fairy baby, boy or girl, is born. The little baby sleeps hidden under its leaves, and as the plant grows taller, its fairy grows up too. There is probably a fairy, a flower fairy, not very far away from where you are at this very moment, looking after a tree or a flower. Flower fairies sweep away dead leaves and polish up new ones. They keep their flower petals shaped clean and tidy. And every flower fairy helps with the important job of sowing seeds and watering the new seedlings. What are flower fairies like? They worry about the weather and insects eating their plant leaves, as well as humans picking their plants and dropping rubbish. But flower fairies also love music and dancing and having fun. They do all they can to help each other and look after the countryside, and they are the nicest kind of all the fairies. Flower fairies have very special clothes. Everyone wears an outfit which is made from the leaves and petals of their own plant or flower, and this makes it easy for them to hide among the leaves and flowers. Flower fairy boys and girls are proud of their clever disguises. Seed pods, petals, buds and leaves become sweet bonnets, shoes and bags, and buttons are made from dried seeds. In a flower fairy's dress needs pat oh if a flower fairy's dress need patching, she will pick a petal or leaf from her plant and take it to Tansy, the fairy who mends clothes. Tansy uses a needle from a pine tree and her thread is made from dried grass. Lavender washes all the flower fairy's clothes. She uses soap made with her own sweet smelling flowers. On a windy day, lavender hangs up the clothes to dry, pegged out on bushes or on washing lines strung up between tufts of grass. Can you see them hanging up to dry? Flower fairies let butterflies and bees drink nectar from their flowers. During the coldest winters, fairies huddle together with the mice in their burrows and birds in their nests to keep warm. So they are happy to share their seeds and nuts with these friendly creatures. Flower fairies eat nuts and berries with honey from the bees and fruit from their trees. They make fragrant wine, sweet jam, and delicious fairy jelly. Just like humans, flower fairies need to be cared for when they are young. The babies crawl and clamber around their plants, falling off and getting into mischief. So the older flower fairies look after the little ones. Every single older flower fairy has a job of teaching the young ones how to care for their plant. But a lot of the time, flower babies just have fun. Flower fairy homes are all around you, but they are cleverly hidden. A human would not recognize a flower fairy home. We would just see a few bent blades of grass or a pile of twigs and leaves. 
Garden flower fairies are the most sociable. A lot of them live in parks or town gardens, so of course they're used to traffic noise and human voices and not as easily frightened. Garden fairies enjoy company. They are confident, friendly, and talkative. Delicate and pretty wildflowers live peacefully alongside country lanes and footpaths. They play together, and sometimes you can hear them calling to each other. Their voices sound like bird song. The windswept fields and meadows are home to the nomadic grass fairies. They have no particular home, and at night they just crawl under a leaf to sleep. Treetop fairies are the most daring and athletic of all flower fairies. The blossom fairies have no fear of heights. They are happy of swinging from branch to branch high up in their trees. They are fairy acrobats. And the water fairies play near their homes on the banks of rivers and streams. Sometimes you can hear their silvery voices, which sound a little bit like running water. The youngest nut fairies are the naughtiest, playing noisy games of chase in their branches. If you are walking under a beech tree on a blustery day, it is not the wind that sends the beech nuts raining down on your head. Look up at any tree. There's so much for us, for our eyes to see. And if you're quick enough, maybe a laughing, fa laughing fairy in a tree. Flower fairies love music and dance. The king and queen of the flower fairies love to have parties in their fairy court, and everyone joins in. Flower fairies have lots to celebrate. Four times a year, they throw a big ball to usher in the start of spring, summer, autumn, and winter. When the fairies hear can the Canterbury Bells flowers ringing, they know a party is about to start. The flower fairies begin to gather, coming from far and wide. The singing and dancing goes on late into the night. The next day, there are a lot of sleepy flower fairies dozing under their plants. To shop and to school, to work and play, the busy people pass all day. They hurry to and fro and hardly notice as they go the wayside flowers known so well, whose names so few of them can tell. They never think of fairy folk who may be hiding for a joke. Oh, if these people understood what's to be found by the field and wood, what fairy secrets are made plain by footpath, road, or lane, they'd go with open eyes and look, as you will when you've read this book, and then at least they'd learn to see how pretty common things can be. The end. Now you could go outside and look for fairies right where you live. Have fun.